Paulo Bancaro joins Elite Company, joining Shaquille O'Neal as the only players in Orlando Magic history to be named Rookie of the Year and then named an All-Star the following season. The Orlando Magic also coming off of a victory against the Chicago Bulls, 114-108. Let's talk about it with Dante Marcatelli. He's the host and sideline reporter for the Orlando Magic on Bally Sports Florida, and he joins us right now on the All-Pro Roofing phone line. Dante, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, great to talk to you guys. You got me all fired up with those Paolo highlights. That is, uh, <laughs> that's fantastic. We're all we're riding high after that win last night and then uh, kind of reliving that Paolo magic. That was, uh, that was fun. It's been a fun season, and, uh, and I think it's going to be very exciting for Magic fans the final month and a half. Absolutely, and I, I want to start with Paolo because this is his first time being named an All-Star. Certainly won't be his last in an Orlando Magic uniform. He was selected first overall by Orlando. He's a he's an absolute superstar um, in this league. Um, if he's not maturing already to become one of those top tier superstars, but talk to me how you have felt about the young man's play um, from his rookie season till now. Well, I think he I think he entered the NBA with a poise and a maturity about him, which I, which I, I just think you don't find with a guy with, with anyone that at that time was twenty years old. He now turned. 21 this year, but there was just such a, a poise and a maturity and a, a level headedness and an understanding of, Hey, I'm the number one pick. There's kind of a lot of pressure. There's a lot of expectations that come with that. And he was ready for that. He does never gets too big for the moment. You know, he's had some game winners and, you know, we just heard, you know, a couple of the big shots that he's made uh, along the way. And that's been so much fun to, to watch that progress. And, you know, he'll have a game winner in Chicago, November 15th. And it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm the number one pick. You guys brought me in here. This is what I'm supposed to do. I'm right. supposed to hit big shots. <laughs> so I think right. you understand what, what's required of it. Uh, but then to go out there and do it is, is just impressive. And I, and I think what's most impressive, too, guys, is his unselfishness. You look at his last his last two games, you know, he, he had a chance to break a magic record of consecutive games with 20 points and five assists. And he was sitting on around 16 points. But Franz Wagner had it rolling against uh, against San Antonio the other night. So he continued to feed him. You know, he doesn't go. He doesn't go hunt statistics. Right. He doesn't go hunt points just to get them. You know, whoever's got the hot hand, he'll give it to him. And he, he's just all about winning right. and making the right play. And I think that's very impressive for a 21 year old. Absolutely, and it's great to see him become an All Star. However, I feel there's going to be another Orlando Magic player on that roster who will get a couple of All Star nods in Franz Wagner. No and, and Hoops Hype comes out with their top 25 players. I think 25 or younger and. They had both Franz and Paolo in their top 15. Now, what do you think this duo can be moving forward as they and the Magic continue to develop? Well, I think what we've said from day one, we, as we felt Franz Wagner should have been the rookie of the year. We thought he, we still think he's the best player in that draft from three years ago. And there, there's so much love for Scotty Barnes, and there should be phenomenal player. But, you know, at, at the time he won rookie of the year, he had, he had Pascal Siakam, he had uh, at that time, Fred Van Bleed. I mean, he right. had all their all-stars on his roster, so not as much was expected of him, whereas Franz was putting up the identical numbers, and at that time, you had no Apollo. He was the guy. He was it. He was it. He was number right. one on the scouting report, and he was still putting up similar numbers. Now you take away Pascal and you take away Fred Van Bleed, and Toronto's in a free fall, <laughs> you know, right. which is what happens. Uh, and it's a, But again, Scotty Barnes gets the all-star nod, and we felt probably Franz should have got that, and if not, Hopefully he does get it. So uh, I, I think his time is coming. I, I think he understands what it takes to, you know, to, to he, he, first of all, he has an uncanny knack of scoring in the paint. So he can get to the basket, uh, which, uh, you know, the, the Magic are bottom, is, you know, bottom two or three team in the league as far as three-point percentage. And, you know, so you could easily just pack the paint and dare the Magic to shoot. So that's what a lot of teams have started to do. And yet still, through all that traffic and all that defense in the painted area, He's still able to get to the basket, which is just phenomenal. His ability to finish and the Euro step and, and everything that he brings. So um, you, you look at that, and then you look at now he's added the three-point shot. I mean, he has been so yeah. effective. Uh, he had five of them last night, tied a career high, and big, big step-back threes. Yes, you know, He's got all that confidence from winning the gold medal with Germany this summer. And I think those eight games off when he rolled his ankle, I think really hurt him and, and kind of made him fresh. And uh, So he'll be, you know, we, we've seen a – you know, just, uh, just we've seen him really take it to the next level here the, the last couple of weeks. So his last four games, he's averaging 30 points a game. Seven times this year, he's gone for 30 or more in a basketball game. 
Um, we're, the, the Magic are now 12-4 and four when he and Paolo get 20 or more in the same game. Uh, so I, I think that duo, understanding which one has the hot hand at that time and deferring to the other. There's no ego. It's all about winning. Let's understand who has the mismatch, who can take advantage of, and let's feed that guy until they stop it, and then we've got the other option. Dante Marcatelli, our guest, he's the host and sideline reporter for the Orlando Magic on Bally Sports Florida. Dante, I want you to talk about the job that Jamal Mosley's done since being named head coach. I mean, in the NBA where many coaches aren't able to stay long enough to be able to put their imprint on a team as a coach, especially a young upstart uh, rebuilding team, the front office, the fans, and that entire squad seems to be putting their belief in Jamal Mosley. Talk about the job he's done. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head, and I, I think that's what is – so impressive because so many times you see these rebuilds, you know, and you go back to Philadelphia and trust the process. And these, these guys, do, the, the coaches who uh, are head coaching those rebuilds don't get the opportunity to see it through. Right. Uh, right. So you, 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 you take on the rebuild. A lot of times it's a first time coach. They're appreciative to have the job. They just rack up losses. And then when it's time to win, the, a lot of these organizations move on. But I think the understanding is, you know, the Jamal Mosley is not that kind of guy. Like this is a guy that's, that put in his dues, right? So almost 20 years as an assistant coach, spent the last seven years before Orlando with Dallas. So this is a guy that has a ton, a ton of experience. But you know what else he's got is he's got, he's got unbelievable relationships with his players. And he's yes. got incredible buy-in from everyone on his team. He's just a genuine, he's just a genuine uh, real article. And, and his players believe in him. And I remember Rick Carlisle saying, when Jamal Mosley becomes a head coach, his players won't let him fail. And I think that's what we've seen, just because there's such a belief there. And I Absolutely. look at last night, you know, Wendell Carter Jr. just didn't have it going. And, you know, and Mo Wagner had, had played, but Nick Vucevic was kind of having his way. So he just, with, with no matter who you put out there, so you, so he had it, so he will follow his gut. And he goes to Goga Bataze, who had played 16 minutes in 10 games, wow. right? Dude, let's, let's put him out there. Yeah. And he puts him in at the nine minute mark of the fourth quarter of a critical game with a playoff atmosphere. And, got, and Goga blocks DeMar DeRozan in overtime, right? Ends up having one of the game-winning blocks. He catches a lob and hits the game-winning free throw. That's a feel that he had, and he ends up playing him 14 minutes uh, down the stretch. It's just remarkable. So he has a feel for kind of who might give him a, a big bump that night. He's always encouraging his guys. Big win last night, but he doesn't let him get too high. And when they lose three or four in a row, he doesn't let them get too low. He's so even keel. He's a phenomenal coach. He's got great relationships. And I'll tell you what, guys. When you start looking at free agency and who might join this team down the road, every single big name, every single superstar on every single team comes over during the game, before the game, after the game, and says hi to Jamal Mosley. So th this guy has a ton of clout. He's got a ton of relationships. And I think that's when, when the time comes for this team to strike big in free agency, uh, they're going to come because of that guy and Paolo and Franz and what's going on here in Orlando and in, in the front office and what they've done, uh, but because of how much that respect they have for Jamal. And that's what I wanted to talk about uh, with you, Dante, because when you look at this team, it's certainly one on the rise, and, and they have a strong nucleus of young players. You have the duo in Paolo and Franz, but you also have Wendell Carter Jr., Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, who's had an amazing season. Uh, Anthony Black is, you know, showing right. promise as well. So what do you, what do you feel um, outside looking in, not being in the front office meeting, uh, are the next steps for this team to go from that play-in type team to now one of those strong contenders within the Eastern Conference? Well, it's a good question, and it's something that the, the front office will have to explore. You know, you look at this roster and you say, okay, they got to add shooting somewhere on there, right? So right. who's the guy that might be available? Is it is it through the draft? Is it internally? Do you have that guy on your roster now uh, that's going to develop into a knockdown shooter that, that, that you can't leave? on the three-point line, or do you have to go explore that in free agency or trade? So I think that's something that you'll look at. They have to figure out what they're going to do with Markel Fultz, uh, free agent at the end of the season. So obviously that, you know, those, those uh, discussions continue to be ongoing. So it'll make a decision. Is it, are you moving forward full time with, with Markel who, who has proven, you know, to, to, to be a phenomenal point guard for this team. 
They're 54 and 130 without Markel Fultz. They're 75 wow. and 70 with him. Wow. So you know, you look wow. at you look at the difference that he's made, and right. it's not glaring numbers. And everyone looks at the three point shot, but still, this guy is high in assists. He's a terrific defender. He feeds his teammates. So uh, there's a lot of value there, and right. you know, and and so what's that point guard position going to look like moving forward? Because as you mentioned, you got Anthony Gallic, like Anthony Black waiting in the wings. Um, but I think are, are you going to add a, a proven veteran scorer? Now uh, that can that can be a consistent three point shooter. I, I think that's something that can take you to the next level because I I don't think you need to add a ton because you're going to continue to have development and growth within your roster. Right. Uh, and 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 everybody's on kind of team friendly deals and you you've got the second most salary cap money at your disposal this summer so you can make a huge splash. You can get one guy or two guys uh, here in the you know coming up here this summer. So this is a very exciting time. Uh, Jeff Weltman has been phenomenal with, with what he's done yes. and how he's navigated this roster and, and put this whole thing together here. And, and if you decide to keep the young guys and, and just kind of turn it over to them at some point, you, you certainly have that luxury as well. A couple more for Dante Marcatelli, the host and sideline reporter for the Orlando Magic on Bally Sports Florida. So next week, Shaquille O'Neal getting his jersey number retired yes. by the Orlando Magic. Um it almost seemed like he left a lot of meat on the bone when he left Orlando to go to Los Angeles. He and Penny had that great documentary where they talk about him leaving in Orlando, uh, seeming not to be able to see through a championship or maybe spending more years together. Kind of when this Jersey retirement happens, kind of what are your memories of Shaq and that past Orlando Magic team with he and Penny? Well, think about this, RJ, and this is the this is the biggest thing. So. You know, Shaq leaves after four years, right? Because right. the Lakers offered him a bigger contract, and, he, and he's and he's able to go, and he's able to take that. The very next season, they put in a rule that the team can match yeah. any salary that's offered uh, to their rookie. How about wow. that? So you so because yeah. of Shaquille O'Neal, uh, that rule is in place. So had that been in place in 1995 instead of 96, Shaq would have been forced to stay here right. for another eight years, and I think you would have had a championship or two. You certainly would have had. Uh, another few trips. So I, I think that was just bad timing, unfortunately, you know, and, and unfortunately he, he left and, and had his eyes on, you know, going out to Hollywood and, and, and all of that, but that was so long ago. And, and, you know, there are fans that are still upset by that, unfortunately. And there's fans that understand how big he was and put this organization on the map. But I, I think you, you, what you have to understand is no superstar rarely, if ever does a superstar leave on good terms. <laughs> for yeah. any team, yeah, right. So, yeah. so now that happens. It is what it is. And now, all this time later, you know, uh, uh, you know, time heals all wounds, and it's not the the right thing to do. And the first number that should be in that in the rafters is that number thirty two, O'Neal, and, and that's because he put this organization, he put this entire operation on the map. You know, and it, and it's no slight to anybody else. But if you know, if the Magic get two or three, and that pick is Alonzo Mourning or Christian Leitner. That's a completely different, oh, great yeah. players, uh, great players and all stars in their own right. But that it's just a completely different trajectory for this organization than if you get number one in Shaquille O'Neal. So I, I think it's, it's huge. You know, he, he, that this is the guy that put everybody on the map and, and, you know, it's unfortunate how he left. It's unfortunate that championship didn't happen here, uh, but he brought the team to the finals and he's still in the top 10 in about 10 different categories in four in, with right. four years of work. So, it's going to be a special night. We've got a lot of his former teammates coming back, uh, which is going to be cool. So it's going to be a magical night on Tuesday, and, uh, and we, we can't wait for it. Final moments with Dante Marcatelli of Bally Sports Florida. Who do you have winning the Super Bowl, Dante? Well, I'm going with the 49ers, and I'm simply doing – I understand the Pat Mahomes thing, and I understand right. you can't go against Pat Mahomes in the Super Bowl, but I'm a Patriots fan, guys. <laughs> so you can't – don't hold that against me, but – the last team to win back-to-back Super Bowls was the Patriots in 3 4 so right. I want that to stand. And I don't want Patrick Mahomes coming anywhere, or any quarterback, coming anywhere near uh, Tom Brady's Super Bowl total. So <laughs> it scares me. It scares me because I think Pat could win the next five in a row. Right. So i gotta, I got to find a way to cool him off a little bit. So it, it's, it's completely unfounded on anything factual, uh, or I, it's just my own. <laughs> my own take on it so i'll be i'll be pulling for the niners right but i do think the chiefs are the better team how about you who do you got i have the chiefs in this one i can't i can't bet against pat mahomes anymore i just i i can't i i thought i thought that uh i thought the ravens would have his number and if pat mahomes shows up once again i i, I can't bet against him it's, it's definitely going to be an exciting game i have it in a close one though dante 
No, I'm with you. I, I don't blame you. Listen, I, that, he's, he's the man. There's no question about it. And, and if, if there's any time on the clock, we saw with 35 seconds left in Buffalo, if there's, if there's any time on the clock and he's got the football, he's going to win the game. Absolutely. Your, your only chance is to get up four touchdowns before that. <laughs> we'll see. And, you know, they, and for San Francisco might have the defense to do that. But I, I think it's going to be a lot for Brock Purdy. But wouldn't, you know, wouldn't that be a phenomenal story for, for that Absolutely. youngster to come in and lead his team to a victory? But let's get a good game. Let's get some wings. Let's get some, some good food. Yes, and, and hopefully everybody enjoys the, enjoys the Super Bowl here today. Yes, sir. That's Dante Marcatelli. He's the host and sideline reporter Thanks, for the Orlando Magic. And we are so grateful that he was able to join us for a couple of of moments thank you dante hey guys rj always great to talk to you we, we love the partnership and the affiliation with 1010 xl we're excited about getting some magic games on the station here down the stretch for what should be a, an exciting finish here the final 29 games and and what we hope and expect on into the playoffs so keep up the great work rj we'll talk to you guys soon